and we're going to turn it over to Addie. Have a great class. Hi, everybody. This is so fun. I'm watching all the names pop up and people say hi and I'm recognizing people and I'm just so thankful that you guys are all here. Um, I am so thankful for this opportunity to work with Michaels. I like had a pinch me moment back in March when they reached out and it was really fun to go through the process of just trying to figure out what I wanted to create for them. So I got um, a couple tasks to, to create. I ended up doing about four projects. So today we're gonna do one and a half of them. We're gonna do the kids pumpkin and we're gonna do the little ghost sequin pumpkin that's over there. And I am just excited that you're here. Um, a little bit of background for me, I, grew up with a mom who was a seamstress and so I had a shop full of goodies to pick from um, and to just like explore my creativity whether it was scrap fabric or buttons or whatever and so she encouraged me to be super creative. In college I studied fashion and uh, retail. I ended up getting a retail degree from the University of Arizona and I really wanted to own like a retail boutique but then I ended up moving so much that that didn't happen and so now that I have become a mother and I've put my creativity back into the forefront of my life, it's been so great to get on Instagram and connect with so many of you and share that, that, that with you. Like the fact that I found so many people who enjoy the same thing, it's just been great. So enough about me. If you have any other questions, you can put them in the chat. Um, and then I'm just going to get started. So for this, um, I don't know, I don't think I have to press this button, but maybe I need to. Um, I, for this, we're gonna do, um, use the Creatology acrylic paint. The reason um, we chose Creatology for this, one thing I didn't know about Michaels until working with them was that they are super thoughtful about curating the Creatology line for your kids and for my kids. They are super thoughtful about everything that goes into it. And so the reason why the kids pumpkin, we're doing it with the acrylic creatology and why we're mixing the paints instead of just grabbing the pink paint is because this is for kids. So I um, basically just took my red and pink, my red and white because I wanted a pink bat and I started to mix them. And I just kind of played around with like what, how much of each I needed. So. I think I ended up adding more white to get it to be like a bright pink. Um, but you can play around with it and tell, like decide how white you want it. You can make it more red if you have, like Kaysen would probably want it blue. Um, Kaysen's my son, he's three. I also have a six-year-old daughter who loved to create with me. And that is the reason why I started my Instagram, Two Little Tailors. Um, so I'm gonna start with this. I have a paper towel here just because I feel like every time I paint, <laughs> I have paint all over me. It's like inevitable. Like most of my stories when I'm filming on Instagram, I have like paint on my fingers, on my nails, somewhere. Um, so I'm going to just mix this together. I'm hoping you guys can see me overhead. You know, um, if you follow me on Instagram, if you don't, um, please do come find me. I love chatting with you guys and creating with you guys. Um, I am in a temporary place right now. My family has recently moved from Indianapolis um, to, to um, Nashville, Tennessee. And so I'm in a place that doesn't have my furniture or my stuff. And so I had to like put myself together here in the living room. And um, so this table, I told um, the moderators that we have a tiny round table and an even tinier one. So hopefully you guys have a good view of what I'm doing here because it's not my typical space, but I am looking forward to having a craft room in my new house. And so you will be seeing all kinds of goodness when that happens. So see, it's still looking kind of red and I don't want it to be red, I want it to be pink. And my kids love mixing paints. They love knowing like the combinations that create different colors. So this is a really fun thing to do with your kids um, and let them participate. And I'll kind of slow down too, because I know if you know me in real life, I talk really fast. I actually have had to work on <laughs> slowing down my cadence because I talk really fast. Um, so the way that we're gonna go through this project and the way I think that 
that you'll actually leave with is something complete is we're gonna paint the pumpkin first and then we'll set it aside to dry. The lovely thing about the Creatology paint is it's pretty thick. So I'll show you what I painted earlier. One coat is really pretty good. Um, if you're really, really particular, you could probably go for a second coat. And I did on the original one, but if for today's purposes, if we wanna just go through one coat, I think that's probably best. And it's really nice and thick. So we'll paint, we'll cut the wings and get the wings all created while that dries. And then we'll check on it. And if it's not dry yet, we can, um, we can start on the other pumpkin. I know some of you might have your kids with you. I do not, they are at soccer right now. And I think if they were here, you wouldn't be able to hear me. Um, you guys, if you follow me on stories, Kason just yells, he has one volume that's loud. And so I don't think you would be able to hear me talk if they were here, but they have created these and they do love them. So if you have kids that aren't gonna last that long, I understand this will be on the Michaels website, like she said on Monday. So you can always come back to it um, or you can like let your wings um, dry and your back, your pumpkin dry and then just assemble it later on. Um, so I think, I'm trying to see if this is the color I like. It looks pretty close. Let me add a little, little, a little more white. Just because, you know, particular. What creative isn't, right? I was talking to somebody the other day. Oh, it was my nail girl. I was talking to her and I said, we were talking about making stuff and how you end up just making so much when you're a maker. And I said, yeah, like my bow ties for my wedding. I ended up sewing 10 bow ties because I couldn't find the exact teal that I liked. And I know it's extra, but, and Michael was like, this is the exact same color. <laughs> it is not. So, you know, extra is good. Extra, extra keeps me going. All right, so I'm gonna start. You don't have to be super careful around here. The cool thing about these pumpkins is they're kind of like an organic um, pattern anyways. I guess you guys are up here. Um, they're kind of an organic pattern anyway. So I just kind of like loosely follow that. And if you make a mistake, that's okay. You're, you know, it's a pumpkin. <laughs> so how am I doing? Is, there, is anybody crafting with me? I know that on some of these classes, cause I've watched a few of them that some people prefer to just like watch it and enjoy and then like craft later, especially since they're live. So am I keeping up? Am I going too fast? You guys let me know. I really wish I could see your faces. Mimi said that you are doing, um, that you're doing just fine and that she is crafting right along with you. I love you, Mimi. Mimi, if you, anybody needs a hype girl, Mimi's it. She is always there to encourage me and cheer me on. And that is one of the beautiful things about Instagram and the community, honestly, the creative community. Um, everybody just cheers for each other. It's so awesome. And, and one thing I really picked up when I started was they push me. Like you think you have a good idea and then you go open up your app and you're like, dang, that is a good idea. That is a good idea. Oh, she did that. That's so cute. So it really pushes you outside of your um, comfort zone and like outside of your typical like skill level. You try all kinds of things. Um, because you're inspired. So that's one of my favorite things about Instagram is like connecting with people and getting, um, getting inspired by them. Well, Eddie, it's you really have cool a lot thing. of people that are loving this pink color. And then you have some, they are just watching and they're going to do it later with their kids when they get the Oh, perfect. I love that. I'd probably be the same way. Kind of fun to like do it, but then like do it on your own. I know I had somebody in my messages saying like, I'll probably do this. This will probably be an after bedtime thing. And I feel that too, because sometimes you just want to do it on your own. My tip for that with when I'm doing it with kids is I get three. I get one for Eleni, I get one for Kason, and I get my own because I want mine to look the way I want mine to look. <laughs> and, I, and I let them do whatever they want to theirs. So if you're painting with kids, no pressure. They can do whatever they want and it'll look just fine. 
There is a question out there asking, what's the best paintbrush? So I, I like the Creatology, um, where's that pack? It, ha it has a pack of five and I like it because it has all different ones, but I typically just get a craft paint brush. Um, the same thing goes for the, um, I think it's Artist Lofts, Artist Loft. These are nice as well. These are good because they're smooth. I wouldn't use a foam brush on something like this just because the application is a little tougher. Like this, I'm able to like spread out really easily. And sometimes I feel like the foam brush can retain all the paint and then put it in one spot. And then you're swiping a lot more. Whereas this, I think just kind of carries it a little smoother. So I'm like almost done painting this. Are y'all over here at the top? Um, and I wanna like tell you a little secret. I don't paint the bottom because nobody sees the bottom. And then you have to really wait for it to dry, to turn it over. So as long as the reflection and I mean, like when it's here, as long as you can't see the orange reflecting, because depending on the surface that you put it on, you'll, you'll see that, um, then I think you're good. And so even if like the edge touches, you can see it there, how obviously part of the bottom is, is painted. I think that's good. Even the pumpkins that I posted for the, for Michael's that has the trio, we started calling them the pumpkin trio because my assignment was one pumpkin. <laughs> but as extra as I am, I said, well, what about if I, what if I did three? Because that just feels better. Like one little lonely pumpkin, I don't know if it'll have the effect that three will. So that's why the um, sequin pumpkin ended up having three variations where we're, there was the small single one, the one that was shaped like the actual face, and then the one with multiple. If you haven't seen that, um, it's on the Michaels website. It's also on my Instagram. I posted it a couple weeks ago to Little Taylors. Um, that was a fun one to do all three of them. It's also funny because I always thought I was extra and then I got on, got into the creative niche and I'm like, I am not as extra as I thought. This is super normal. <laughs> All right, so I think that's good. Take a look at your pumpkin. The coverage to me is good. The nice, like I said, the nice thing about the Creatology paint is that it has really great coverage. Like I know sometimes with other paints, I have to, I have to do a couple, um, couple coats. So we're gonna let this air dry. Probably could have done like a blow dryer or a heat gun or something but I didn't because I don't know if y'all want to hear me blow drying this thing. But I think that if we put that aside, it'll dry probably just enough for us to move on. Um, so I'm gonna put away my paint so I don't knock it over because I am clumsy and <laughs> the one, this will end up on my jacket and then I'll use that. Okay, so I'm gonna put this away too. And then I'm gonna get out the sequin, the gems. So the cool thing um, about you know this partnership with Michaels was that I got to get a little sneak peek of everything, and um, which was so funny. It's so funny to switch your brain from like spring and Easter to like Halloween in in April. But I did it, and it was so fun to see all the stuff that they had coming out. And I loved this little pack of gems. It has like all these different colors. And I just feel like these are the things that I always loved to play with as a kid. My mom had like, you know, all the bins of stuff like this. So I, I snagged these. Um, and then if you saw on the supply list, like this big bag, I'm going to tell you the story behind this. When I saw these online, when I was looking for my materials list and trying to figure out what I was gonna, going to include, this um, I saw the teardrop ones in here. And I thought they'd be really cute as like fangs on that pumpkin. So that was where that original idea came from. But as I did the project, I didn't really like the fangs. I couldn't figure out how to get the mouth right. So I might still try it this season, um, but that's how I ended up buying this. So you may not need this. You could go, you could do the whole like embellishing with just this pack if you wanted to. Um, but I ended up pulling out like some of the bigger 
round gems to add to the, um, the wing. So it's up to you. You can use what you want. There's no rhyme or reason for how I did the gems. I just kind of feel it. That's and another creative before thing. You, before you discuss the wings, there's a question, how long should they allow the pumpkin to dry? So I did this one right next to me earlier, and I would say it probably took about 40 minutes to dry. Um, it depends on your climate though. Like if you're in a really humid place, it's probably gonna take longer. I grew up in the desert, everything drew, dried in two minutes. And so I, I took me a little bit of like time to learn other places, things dry a lot slower. So I would say probably about 40 minutes, but I'm in Tennessee. If you're in Arizona, like some of my friends, hello friends, you probably dry quick. You stick it outside and be done 10 minutes. Um, Okay, can I move on to this or should, is, are there any other questions? That is all the questions and just know okay. that one is loving it. Oh, yay. Okay, so I printed off, this is something that I made like on an app on my phone just because I didn't, I wanted to have a, something that you guys could use. When I went to print it off last night, my printer created a header and a footer, which made it smaller. I don't know if yours did that, but I printed it off directly from my phone just to be sure that we get the right size because... We want this to be like proportionate. We want it to be like a wing on the thing. We don't want like a little baby wing on a big old pumpkin. <laughs> so I'm going to cut, before you cut yours, if you have the header and footer from your printer, let me show you how much more we need to add. So I'm gonna cut them both out really quickly. Um, and this is just the template. It was on the website listing for the class. If you didn't print it off, no worries. You could just freehand a wing. Um, I think that'll be fine. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it's felt, you know? So there's that. Let me cut the bigger one. And that way you just can see how much bigger. And I'm not a graphic designer, y'all. I just like took this from one of the like stock images, cropped it, <laughs> and boom, got a wing. I think that's one of the things, the messages that I want to get across. Um, when I'm on my page is that like nothing has to be perfect. Like you don't have to be perfect. Crafting is imperfect. Motherhood is imperfect. Like I thought for a long time, like one of the reasons why I didn't start blogging or sharing anything on Instagram was because I was like, I'm not very organized. Like most of the time I'm like flying by the seat of my pants. And like, like I said, my mom had a shop. So I just like would grab stuff and, you know, make things and never had a list of anything that I was using. So I put off starting to share for a long time and you know the realization that you don't have to be perfect and you just show up and if someone asks a question you can answer it you don't have to be perfect so uh let's see okay so i don't have a ruler but i'm pretty decent with measurements so i would say this is probably like three quarter half to three quarter of an inch extra so if you have to make yours bigger just kind of go along the outside of it and make it a little bigger and we're going to cut four of these the reason we're doing four is because when i put the gems on one little piece it was too flimsy so we need them to be thick so i'm going to start with two of these felt pieces and cut um cut just cut the wings and I'm just using regular, like the Creatology, um, these are either Creatology, yeah, they're Creatology um, bent craft scissors. You could use fabric scissors if you have them. You can use regular household scissors. I'm notorious for just like grabbing any scissor. <laughs> if it cuts it, I'll use it. Um, my mom used to get tired of me. She'd be like, you might, you, my stuff is never where it's supposed to be because I took it and used it and made something. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. We're just gluing these on top of each other so that they can be a little heavier. Okay, and now uh, this one wasn't enough room, which is why I got four pieces, I think. Unless maybe the last time I did it a little bit different. You could, if you could, if you have thought this out a little better and you only have two sheets, you could do it like that. Um, far enough to answer too. Okay, so let's see, what else can we talk about? I'm like the kind of person who like wants to chat and chat and chat. And I'll tell you my whole life story without you ever asking. 
which is funny because I didn't do Instagram much before and now I do and I'm like, oh, this is totally for me. I love to talk. Hey, we do have a question. Yes. I know you're going to get ready to glue. I think they're wanting to know what kind of glue are you going to be using? If you're going to use hot glue or not? Okay, so when I did the project, the goal was to make it kid friendly. So I grabbed the like the sequin glue and the craft glue from Creatology. But I am no stranger to hot glue. So if you want to hot glue them, you totally can. I have my hot glue gun here just in case. Um, but the, let's just make sure parents are doing that. Um, I did this when I created them with the craft glue or the sequin glue and there it's still sitting over there and it's held up can you see it over there it's still held up all this time it's been done since april and it's traveled from indiana to tennessee so it did hold up it just the only difference for the glue like that is that this takes a little bit longer time to dry um but even when i did it as long as i put like enough pressure on it to get it to adhere i was able to move on to the next step but if you want to use hot glue, yes. Carolyn is wondering if she's not using, if she's not using felt, but using foam, do she still need to make four, four wings? No, I don't think so. I didn't try it with it, but um, and if it's the thicker foam, I bet you could get away with just one um, like thickness. If it's the thinner foam, then you probably need two, but I think you'd be fine with just one. Okay. And Jody has a, uh, question as well could you use a piece of uh poster board between the felt to make it sturdier you could yeah i didn't do that <laughs> i was trying to make like the small the easiest fewest st uh steps but that'd be a good idea um i love the texture of felt which is why i wanted to use it especially like on the pumpkin but you could even just use poster board if you wanted to um but that would be a good idea to like put the poster board in between here. So it's like really sturdy because I'll show you, I'll grab this. Um, this is a little like floppier. Um, it does hold, hold its shape, but it is a little floppier. So if you wanted it to be stiffer, then yeah, you could totally do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm going to, I like arrange these based off of the pumpkins that I had done previously. But basically, if you wanted to, you just start playing with your gems and seeing how you like it. If you really want to be extra, you could fill the whole gem, but that'd probably be a little heavy. So I just did like a corner kind of like offset. Um, and the only reason why I did this, and I'm not going to freehand it right now, is just so that I show you, I give you what we came for. Like you saw the pumpkin, that's why you're here. I'm going to try to make it exactly the same. That's the other thing I discovered. All this time, I've been gluing sequins and stuff on with hot glue and burning myself. And I had no idea they even made sequin glue and like jet glitter and sequin glue. So um, that was a new discovery for me this through this collaboration was like, wow, why have I been burning my little fingertips all this time? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get started on um, kind of outlining this. One thing I noticed, I bought a couple bottles of these and the texture um, is a little like thin, um, but I like it and I don't mind it because it doesn't go through. Like one of the things with hot glue is, well, if you put it on there, you've got to press it. <laughs> and unless you've got like a little um, heat thingy for your fingertips, it could hurt. So we're just gonna glue this. It doesn't have to be pretty. We're just going to press that down. And I'm going to actually, um, there's a question um, from Pam Six. I think I'm actually going to say it out loud. She was mentioning about a tab on the pattern, but I think it's just the way that you cut the wings out and left oh. the paper. Yeah, so you could cut this shorter. She's talking about this, I'm assuming, because I just went to the edge of the paper. But yeah, I think when I did this, Oh, yeah, so the original one is shorter. So I can cut that if that makes you guys feel better too. The original one's shorter. Um, extra is not bad because that means your wings go a little further out, but yeah, I can cut that off. 
See, that's what you came for, right? Exactly what I made. <laughs> okay. So now that was this side. So we'll do this one. Like I said, it's always just like whatever's happening that day. That's how it's happening. If you loop with me, like on Instagram, we'll do these shares, which is one of my favorite things is like getting a theme or an idea and then just like having to come up with something for it. Um, you know that I'm always running last minute. <laughs> I'm always taking my picture like right before it's we're, we're sharing and I and I don't know if it's just the way I like work better under pressure um I have always been like that my twin brother I have a twin brother Hydro um he always used to hate having to wait for me he I would stress him out so much because he would have to like be everyone like where's Addie where's Addie what's Addie doing where's she at He'd be like holding the bus for me and I'd be hopping out the door on one foot with one shoe. So anyways, I'm always like the last minute. So the creative process for, process for me, it always takes me like a little while to just like gather my thoughts, see what I want to do. And then it has to like really hit me for me to want to like do it. If it's meh, if I don't really feel it or if I'm not excited about it, I don't really usually do it. So like, for every project you see, there's probably like 10 that I didn't do because I wasn't like in love or I scrapped it. Okay, all right. So if we have our pieces cut, do I need to slow down? Um, they they are sticking together. You can see that um, and it'll only get um, stronger of a hold as, as it adheres and as it dries. Um, and I will say about the gems, like the smaller you use, the easier and quicker they're going to dry and like hold up. Um, the bigger ones, they just take a little bit more like pressure to get to it here. Okay. So I'm gonna start putting these on here. Does anybody need a little time to sort through their gems? Because I know I did this right before, like I had the thing out in the little bucket and then I was like, I'm gonna pick mine out so I'm not like sorting through them. Um, so if we need a little time, I can kind of like go slower. Actually, I think this one was a smaller one, so I'm gonna dig through here. See if I can find a smaller one. That's black. So I'm so excited! It's like officially October now. We can like celebrate our Halloween without looking cuckoo. <laughs> my neighbor, I've had a cauldron um, doormat in front of my door since September 1st, and she probably thinks I'm nuts. <laughs> she still had her like summer doormat out until like last week. Okay. okay. Now we're moving here. So these ones are larger. And these ones are from the bigger gem pack, which is not necessary. I know sometimes when you're like crafting or starting crafts, it can feel kind of daunting because you won't, you don't have anything, and so you need to buy a lot of things. But for me, some of those, something like that, or something like you know the glue, or that it's like I'm gonna have it and keep it, and that's gonna be something fun for Elodie to dig through and make stuff. In fact, when I was doing this project, she like made crowns for all of us and she was getting a kick out of that. So I, I like to have stuff like that, but I understand when, if people aren't crafting all the time that they don't want to keep like an overhead of, of stuff like that. I'm just thankful like we um, stopped moving so frequently when I was uh, first met my husband he was playing baseball and we had to move every six months and so my craft stuff kind of became a real annoyance <laughs> when we had to move and i ended up having to pare down all the way to like just like a travel rolly bag and like my sewing machine and then one time i traveled my sewing machine got turned upside down and it just became like a big annoyance and so i'm so glad now we're like a little more settled even though we still move that i can start collecting stuff again and like have my stuff. It's creating makes me so happy. Okay, this is up here. See, I don't know, there's something about this orientation, like the large, the small, the different colors that I love, but 
if you have like another situation you want to create, absolutely. If your kids want to just slap a bunch on here, let them go at it. If they want to cover the whole wing, that's cool too. So I'm going to just use the um, sequin glue. I don't know if this whole thing is supposed to come off, but I'm going to take that off and then just start dabbing. And I'm not going to put too much because I don't want it to like leak out the side of it. I want it to just adhere my gem and then stay discreet. So if you put too much, it's going to start bleeding out the side. All right, so we're gonna press them down. All right, are there any other questions? Is anybody? There's a question that just came through asking for a close up of the gems. So I'm assuming this, um, when you're able to have them glued down, so of these, of like the orientation? Yes. So this is the left wing. And then I can show you what the right wing is gonna look like. Let me scoot it forward, sorry. This is my first live Zoom class. Can you believe it? So I'm figuring all this out. Oh. There they go. And I'm cheating, you guys. I put the picture of the pumpkin that I finished right next to me, just so you know. <laughs> because I didn't want to keep looking back here. And I didn't want you guys to be like staring at the back of my head. So I <laughs> printed that off this morning and I stuck it over there. So I'm just going to reference my cheat sheet over here and do that again. No worries. That would have been a panic mode had I not done that. All right. You are getting a lot of very pretty and it looks great and that you're doing. Yay. Yay. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming. Like I know it's a Saturday and there's busy schedules and it's hard to arrange, you know, putting everything aside. And I mean, the effort to log in and, you know, I know that you're here because you're supporting me and I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. I, you know, didn't plan to start a blog. I like started sharing on Instagram because I move a lot and it's hard to make friends. Let's be honest. When you're a mom of two kids and you're busy, um, moving to a new city is kind of hard. So I was having a hard time finding people who wanted to craft and stuff with me and not like tease me for like making a custom cape for superhero day for my daughter. Like and so when I got on Instagram and I found all the people who do all that stuff, it was so great. So I am thankful you are here. And for my friends who've known me forever, who pretty much if you've known me, you, I've made you something. I've either made you something or I've made something for you to give to somebody. You probably have something in your closet or you pass something down to your kids that I've made you. So thank you for always supporting me in that too. I know my friend Carrie, I think she's tuning in with her son and she used to live with me. <laughs> and if you live with a crafter, you know that stuff is everywhere. I had a room and it was just like sewing stuff on the floor, and pins. That was my big problem with sewing was I always ended up with pins on the floor. Um, so it's always been in me. Even when I traveled with Michael, it was like, hard to let go of that. So I still travel with my stuff because creating is what makes me happy. I don't know how not to either. I had a girlfriend, she was like, I don't, I just don't see the stuff you do. Like if I see something I'm like, oh, I could probably change that or do something to that. She's like, yeah, no, I would not <laughs> do that. Okay. So it feels a little like wobbly when you're applying them, like a hot glue, you're going to put it there and it's going to stick. It's not going to go anywhere. This, it needs a little bit of time to adhere. Um, to cure. So I've got them where I want them and I'm going to slide that away so that it can dry. Um, but the great news is even though it doesn't feel super secure right now while you're doing it, it does dry and hold them. These things over here, if you can still see them, I moved it, but these are living proof that it works and it's great. Okay. Second wing. I'm going to try to go a little faster because I know I have to do another pumpkin and that one's pretty easy. It's just adding um, sequin, but I don't want to run out of time if you guys came for just that one. 
um, that was the other thing too, because I did four projects, I would have put pink on everything, but I had to like make a variation. So it wasn't boring, but I think the sequin pumpkins would be fun to do anything in it. I even thought about like the rainbow Halloween that is so popular um, or like, you know, the multicolor Halloween, which is so awesome. That's another reason why I love creative people. It's like Halloween used to just be black, white, and orange. And now you can do whatever you want. There's like creative freedom in that. Um, but yeah, so I was thinking you could do different color sequins too, if you wanted to, not today, but another day when you're at home, sequins crafting with pumpkins. The reason that that was born also is I like, when I'm trying to think of something, so I was assigned four projects and then it's kind of like go time, like go figure out what you want to do. And so I do a lot of like. In, like inspiration searching I'll go through hashtags and I'll go through Pinterest and I'll go all around looking for things um even Michaels has really good resources on their website they have a lot of like inspo and so I'll search those things and then like the little part in me that likes to be a little outside the box and a little different is like okay now how can we make something that like we haven't seen and one thing I hadn't seen was sequins on pumpkins so that's why I went with that for the second craft was because I just hadn't seen anybody do that. And I was like, that's so funny because it's such a common thing that we use, but it's not really applied to like Halloween or pumpkins. So that's how that was born. Okay, got my last piece on there. Luckily this dries clear because I have a few little boo-boos here where I was moving. All right, so those are gonna dry. My pumpkin is not dry. So if you're cool with me moving to the sequin pumpkin, I'll do that. And then um, when we're done, we can uh, add the wings or since we've already completed both of these steps, you can just add them on your own. The only thing that I did to add the wings was I applied blue here and I applied blue here and I just put them on the side of the pumpkin so that they had enough um showing um is still in the frame. Let's see. uh okay so i'm gonna move on to a little baby five inch pumpkin these are my favorite i get these every year and you can do anything with them like um florals whatever they're so fun they're the possibilities are endless i forgot to mention my eyes so that is the other step that needs to be done. And that does need to be dry to put the eyes on. Um, so we'll see if we can uh, manage to get that done. Uh, if the pumpkin dries and if not, that's an easy thing for you to do as well. The picture of this um, bat pumpkin is the like icon picture for the class. So if you want to reference back, you can just click on it and you can see the picture. Or if you want to message me on Instagram, um, my handle again is two little tailors and I also have email and it's just my name Addie at two little tailors.com and I can send you the picture. I don't mind doing that. Um, okay, so I'm going to get my sequin out. Oh, that was the other thing I remembered about this. These little things are so staticky. I was going to get a dryer sheet because I forgot about this when I was doing them. <laughs> It's going to make for a fun little experiment here. Um, let me put these down so you can see just what I'm doing. Now, the thing about this pumpkin is I did not draw a pumpkin. I didn't like, I just freehanded with the glue. So it's up to you. The cool thing about ghosts is that they have a million different shapes. You see some that have like a little bottom like this, some that have like spiky bottoms, some that like tail off. So you can make your ghost however you want your ghost to look. Um, if you wanna grab a pencil or a pen to draw it out first, I don't mind you doing that. I feel that that's a good plan, especially if you're not like um, a super visual person or can't see it um, as you're building it. I just winged it because that's how I craft. I'm like a, Let's try it, we'll see. <laughs> and if not, you can always flip it around and try the other side. So I'm gonna take my sequin and glitter glue from Creatology. And these are the Creatology sequins. Each of these packs come, and I have a pink one here because I grabbed it just 
because they come with three different sizes. Uh, so if you purchase these, you should see, if you're using sequins you already had, then use whatever size you want. But the eyes specifically for this size pumpkin, I use the littlest size because anything bigger wasn't gonna work really. So let me pull this up so you can see it. So which angle are we on here? Okay, so this is this, the pumpkin that we're gonna make now. So this, you can see the middle of this, I did small um, white, and then the eyes have small black. And then around here, I kind of vary, I like use a variation of the larger size white and the medium size white. So I'll put that right here. So if you wanna have a template for yours while I go, um, you can do that. All right, I'm gonna start crafting. How are we doing? Anybody have any questions? Are you cool with me moving on? I'm sorry, I can't talk to you guys. Everything is going well. I can see some of those who do have their cameras off that are working right along with you. Yay, okay. All right, so this doesn't have to be pretty. This is just like, it's gonna get all covered up. So we're just making an outline of a ghost. Um, I did like a little ruffle at the bottom because I love that. I think it's cute, whatever that is, a scallop, I guess. Um, and then, and then I think I did fill it in. I can't remember exactly. You know, I, did I mention this? I had to make these like three times. So every project I did, I delivered like a handful of content for it. So I did three of those, three of these, three of the others. And so this is my fourth, fourth bat pumpkin. And so <laughs> I don't remember which way I did it. Um, but I think my, the main thing is just to like get the outline so you know where you're going. And then, um, oh my God, I kind of wanted to go down a little bit like this. No, I see on my phone. How did I do it? Did I do all right? Let's see. Okay, I got a little more of a tail over here. A little more tail over here. So that he's on his way somewhere, you know? He's going to haunt somebody. Or if he's like some of our favorite book characters, we've gotten a lot of, my daughter's a little shy. So we've gotten a lot of like the shy ghost books. And so... Not every ghost likes to haunt, you know? All right. So I think I did, yeah, just a variation. Kind of like whatever looks good, whatever feels good. Um, get that, and I love this glue. I'm like, what did that, what was I doing all this time without the sequin glitter glue? It's so good. And it just like holds it and then it's gonna dry so nicely. So I'm gonna go around the border first. This is there. And I like to question like, asking, should you work in sections if you work a little bit slower? Yeah, I still think outlining it is okay. Because even if this outline dries a little bit, you can just add a little more glue to it. It also becomes kind of tacky. So it might, it still will hold your sequins when you're putting it there. Um, but so I'm going to do it like, like this and go around, but you could do the outline and then maybe like start in a corner and kind of make your way up. When you get to the face though, like the eyes, I would do the eyes before you lay any of the sequin down because I can show this on the overhead if you want to. Um, this, there needs to be space for these to, um, to rest there. And if you put them on top of the other sequin, they might not have the same effect because they'll be white showing through. Now I know why news anchors have water glasses next to them. <laughs> I'm afraid you're talking up a storm. I'm thirsty. Ah, I hope you guys laughed at that. I can't. It's so hard without it, without seeing you guys. No, that I did. And I just <laughs> understand. You did? <laughs> okay, cool. See, this is the thing. They just start popping out. So this is just a mixture of both. We're just going to go around. I think that the reason why it works and it looks so cool is just the different um, light that it catches. 
let me put a little more blue right here. Um, because the bigger ones are going to catch a different light and smaller ones too. So I think that the reason why alternating or just like adding a mixture of them works is because you're getting like different light. And I'll be really honest, like I said, crafting and creating is just like kind of a trial and error thing. When I pitched this idea, I had no idea if it was going to work. I was hopeful and I thought it was a good idea, but I didn't know if it was really going to work. And so it was so like, it was so rewarding when I finished these, like my smile was so big because I thought they were so awesome. And I'm so thankful for Michael, like valuing Michael's valuing my creativity and wanting to share it. And oh my gosh, like them putting it up in the store. I did not know they were going to do that. I knew they were going to put the picture up because she asked me after I submitted it, but I just did not have a clue. My face would be there. So this has all been a real like pinch me moment for me. And with only having started sharing stuff a year and a half ago, I really feel grateful. And I really feel like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, just sharing my creativity with you guys and trying to brighten people's day. And I was yeah. want to know if you're overlapping the gems. I am overlapping a little bit. Can you see that? So if you see the finished one, they're kind of scalloped, almost like, um, how does that look right here? Almost like a mermaid, I guess. So that there aren't big orange holes between them. Cause I think if I tried to do them like just next to each other, it would leave a lot of like gaps. Um, Cause I even have, there are some on this one but I think it would leave bigger holes if we tried to not, if we didn't overlap them. So yes, overlap and kind of like slide them in and squeeze them in where you can. So like even right here, I have a spot that's kind of going to be a hole. You can see glue there now, but I'm going to take a smaller sequin and I'm going to slide it in there so that it gets covered. I, I really should have got a dryer sheet. These are so funny. You know, another funny thing, my brother, my twin brother, he is like not a crafter. He hates glitter. It's like, he, literally he despises it. So you just think about two polar opposites. Like I'm always crafting and creating <laughs> glitter everywhere. And he's like this electrical engineering computer whiz who like despises glitter. Maybe that's what made me so extra is just the disapproval. <laughs> Kathy wants to know um, what exactly does the dryer sheet do or how would so you? I was just thinking, I don't I haven't tried it, but I was just thinking like, I know when people have like static clings, they like rub a dryer sheet on their hair or whatever, you know? So I was just thinking maybe that would help me like from having all the sequins stick to me. I don't know if they're sticking to you guys. Just like wipe my finger on it and then grab one. I thought that might help. Only thought of that this morning though. So that's why it's not here. <laughs> so I have a question. Has anybody seen my, my poster in your stores? I know that um, my mom just, she's in Arizona. I grew up in Tucson. So she just found it like this week. So I'm just, I've had so much fun seeing you guys share them with me. And I wonder if any of you guys have been able to see it in your hometown. I know that you guys are from all over. I'm excited about all those cities that popped up in the beginning. Okay, so now I'm going around the top and I'm just gonna kind of close in this outline. You know what else you could do if you didn't want to be like me? You could use tweezers. Tweezers help too. Tweezers are good for picking up little things that you're crafting with. I've always been like a bare hand person though. Like I'll be covered in hot glue, paint, anything. I never use any of like the tools that you can use to like protect yourself. Eddie, I'm gonna give you a good suggestion, especially when using rhinestones there are little pencils that you can use to pick, pick them up 
I've seen those. I've seen whenever I watch like those videos of people like Ryan bedazzling things. Yeah, that's a good idea. See, I need to add that to my craft tool belt. Works great. Works great. Thank you. See, crafters help helping crafters. I need that. How do? How about like sequins? Does that work with sequins? Probably not, huh? How does it even stick? How does it even hold them? I've seen them do that, and I think it's it's like magic. It's something kind of. I won't say. It's almost like a waxy, almost kind of feel, and all you have mm -hmm. to do is press down on it. And oh, it really? Oh, and it sticks to it. Yes. That's cool. Okay, guys, so I have my outline, and now I'm just going to start building up. And if you can see, you can see on this one that it kind of goes up as a scale, so that, that to me tells me that I put these ones on first and went up. Because if I went this way, it would have a different um, effect. They would be pointed that way. And I think I like this because the cupping is facing up. It's going to catch any of the light because most of our lights are on our ceilings or, you know, like lamps are above us. So that's going to catch more light. I don't know that it would be as um, sparkly the other way. So here we go. Let's see. I'm going to put a little bit more. See, my pumpkin is pretty dry. It's, this pink pumpkin is drying pretty good over here. The whole Arizona thing, like when I moved to North Carolina and we painted like a wall, um, we learned to like, you cover your thing like right away, your roller right away, or otherwise it's dry in like 10 minutes. And my sister-in-law was teasing us like, you can leave that for like an hour, it's fine. We're like an hour, it's gonna be so, so dry. <laughs> But humidity, southern humidity is totally different. I also learned that you can't leave anything in the dryer here either. When I lived in North Carolina. See, we've lived everywhere. We've lived in, I grew up in Arizona. Um, we've lived in North Carolina, lived in Indiana, we lived here. I had a Lydia in Florida. So sometimes I think I confuse people when I'm like talking about where I lived last. Okay, let's see. It's a medium sized one. Oh yeah, that's right. So I don't want this little one. I just dropped a little one on here. I want the little white ones for the middle. Let me wipe that here. Also I had a little paper towel I got because crafting, you always have to have a paper towel nearby. <laughs> thing is stuck to my finger. Okay, here we go. I like the look of the big ones in there too. So I think after this, I'm going to try to do a pink one too, or maybe like one of the ones that has, um, maybe have Elodie do one. That, that's the other thing, even the sequin one, I know it's a little more detailed for us because I'm, that's how I'm doing it. This is a kid thing too, though. Um, last year, I think I did sequins, uh, no, confetti with the kids, but this is a kid thing too. Just let them, let them have some glue that's kid safe, the creatology. Um, sequin glue or like the craft glue from Creatology and then let them go and just slap sequins on it if they want to. They can put them wherever they want. Um, it doesn't have to be a ghost. It can be just like whatever. Okay, so since I got up here, I'm gonna start doing my little eye. You guys want me to turn this around? I realized I didn't turn that back around. I'm gonna start doing the, the little eye. I wanna say I have six, yep, I have six sequins. So I've got one at the top, two, another row of two, and then one at the bottom. And that's how we're creating the eyes so that it has the shape of like an oval, even though it's kind of hard to make an oval with not a pencil. Um, so let's turn that. To be honest, I think I probably would make one of these um, for Elodie and try to make it like with little glasses or some other kind of thing on it because she loves little, she's not a spooky girl. 
she doesn't like things that are scary even things that aren't really scary but they're just kind of like unknown like um learning shows the teacher emailed me yesterday saying that she was upset in the class because of the magic school bus poor thing and so I think she would love a little non-spooky friendly ghost all right let's see if we got room for this I'm gonna squeeze this little thing down in here make the eye doesn't have to be perfect just has to be there and then I have room on this side. It looks like just about the right amount of room for that medium-sized sequin. And I remember putting little skin, like smaller white ones down at the bottom center of the eyes. So let's see. Since there's only just a few more minutes left in the class, I do once again want to remind everyone that this class is being recorded and will be available sometime on Monday. And we will love to see you see what you're being what you've been working on. So please share with us using the hashtag uh, make it with Michaels, as well as Michaels classes. Um, and again, as Addie said, you can always follow her on Instagram at two little tailors. So definitely please tag us and we will love to see um, your yes. patients. Yes, tag me. I will share you to my stories. I would love to see them. Um, someone messaged me that she wasn't going to be able to make it, but she was going to um, create it on her own and tag me. So I would love to see it. I like that's my favorite thing about this is just getting to inspire people and see people create their own things um, that I made. Somebody made one of my doormats this week, and it's just like, oh my gosh, I'm so it's so exciting. So please tag me if you make it. Um, Two little tailors and then hashtag make it with Michael's or Michael's classes. Thank you, Felicia, for reminding me about that because I want to see your projects for sure. And I'm sorry we're running out of time. I wish I could hang out with you guys all day. You can just listen to me chat. <laughs> All right, so I got that there. I'm gonna do the other eye and then um, might be out of time. One, two. So these are fun too because you can put them outside. You could put them on like your kids' shelves. These can go pretty much anywhere. I don't have a lot of space to decorate this year. I only have a couple of spots because all this stuff came furnished, but I made sure to get these things out and displayed. Well, Addie, before we leave, I don't know if you're going to um, show them how to be able to attach the wings to yeah. the pumpkin. So my mine's just about done. Um, and I don't know if yours isn't dry. I don't know if you want to um, adhere it yet, but um you can see the gems are stuck are you guys overhead the gems are adhered so that's nice um and then for the eyes just kind of get an idea of where you want your eyes in the center um and i just put them this it's going to be a little groovy because of the um the ridges of the pumpkin but honestly you just stick them on there and then they're gonna adhere and the same thing for this um go ahead and just put a little bit of glue and let me look at this so let's say your pumpkin is the half like here's your half mark okay you're gonna go just right behind it so like wherever you are in the middle go on the next ridge behind so that when you fold back you don't want to be too far because then you won't get that angle but you want to fold it you want to be able to like fold it back and so like the gems it's going to move a little bit when you first get it on there but it will stick. Um, and I'll show you what I did. It. I kind of like palmed it like a basketball when I did it. Let's see. Yeah, oops. This is what I did when I made it. I just kind of like palmed it like a basketball and put a little pressure enough to like get it to stick. And 
then just kind of leave it alone and let it dry. Oops, my poor little eyes are falling upside down. But then you just like, don't even fold them out yet because you're gonna pull it away from there, but let them dry like this. And then when you're ready to, when they're dry, just like fold them out and let them say hello, let her fly. Also, while you have it, there's a question as um, how you put the boo at the top. How I put the what? Boo. Oh, okay. So the boo for this, so that I did with my Cricut that we listed on there, the option for the Cricut um, option, or you can find just like the letter blue boo. So I print, cut this out with my Cricut and I believe that I provided the file number. So if you wanted to, if you use Cricuts, you can do this, um, but you would just kind of adhere it to the top. Um, mine's going to be like a sticker kind of, and I have to use transfer tape to um, put it on there. But I use my hand. But if you wanted to, just grab like some little stickers and put boo. Um, the little typewriter font is cute. They do sell. Michaels has a um, a set that has like cursive letters. They're independent, so so you'd have to get a B and O and an O from the pack. But they would kind of give the same feel that the letters that I did. Uh oh, I don't know if I'm able to get this tape off. Is that what the question is about, about the boo? Is that good? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I know I'm bouncing back and forth. It's kind of tough with two projects, but if we did just one, we would have had a lot of idle time. So See, I never, this is why I told, the, I told the nail lady, I never do my nails because when I'm crafting, they're just kind of inconvenient. <laughs> I like my, there we go. I like my regular nails because I can dig into all my stuff really good. Okay, so there you go. So this is my Cricut transfer tape. And my, um, what, I think this is just permanent vinyl. I use Oracle or Cricut brand. Um, both are sold at Michael's. And I typically, when I'm doing black, I like to get the matte because it doesn't have a sheen on it. So you can put it anywhere. When I was playing around with this, I didn't know if I wanted the top. I thought about doing it there. I didn't leave a ton of room for this one, um, but I'll probably just stick it right here. That's not work. A little too high. A little too low. Okay. There you go. And it doesn't even matter that it's like this curved surface because it'll fold and bend to fit you. Fit your project. And it's definitely better to do this when it's dry because my sequins are coming up. So if you haven't done this, and I know that we ran out of time, just let your sequins dry and and try to do this on your own. I don't know that that's going to come off. Not coming off. You get the idea. I'm going to put it right there at the top. You can put whatever you want on it. You can do boo, anything, eek. Stickers, you can put names on it, little kids, names, that'd be fun. I'm not going to be able to get this off. <laughs> I didn't. I'm trying so hard not to knock off my, uh, maybe it's just this transfer tape. This is the thing about the Cricut transfer tape. It's so good. It's like so sticky. Usually I have to like put it on my um, pant leg first before I use it so that it doesn't stick so hard um, because it really will take everything with it. It's so good. My neighbor coming home. Yeah. How much time do we have left, Felicia? Oh, we're just over just a few minutes, but that's okay. Oh, we are, okay. All right, well, I'll wrap it up. You get the picture. I'll probably redo this because it's not gonna come off. I needed to tap that on my leg just because I forgot how much the Cricut transfer tape adheres to the vinyl. But basically you're gonna end up with your sweet pumpkin looking like this. Um, Try, to, try different variations if you want to, but you can see this stuff is like really good. It's stuck on there great. And this is doing well too. So I just wanna thank you guys for coming. I know that we had two pumpkins to get through, so that was a little tough, but I am so appreciative of your time and you being here and crafting with me. If you know me, you know that this is my joy. I love crafting. I love putting people around a table with crafts. And so 
we ever get a chance to craft in person together, I will cherish it. And thank you for showing up. And thank you, Michaels, for this amazing opportunity and for just believing in my creativity and giving me the opportunity and chance to meet so many creatives. I hope you guys have a good Saturday.